Lisa. There we go. Lisa Benson is with Landmark Design. Uh, they have been retained to lead uh, our Parks and Recreation Master Plan update. And uh, they were selected, uh, I think, about six months ago, but they've been working on some other side projects with the city, including the Hill, uh, Hillcrest Park design. And um, Lisa, I don't know your credentials, so I will uh, let you uh, introduce those. But um, the purpose of the master plan is to guide future parks and trail amenities um, and their development, the scale and scope and the need throughout the city. And, um, and I'll let Lisa explain the rest. And then I think um, you can open up to questions and answers after that. <laughs> That sounds great. Um, so I'm Lisa Benson. Um, with Landmark Design, we are landscape architects and planners. Uh, we completed the 2017 Parks, Recreation, Trails and Open Space Master Plan for the city. And um, because of some recent acquisitions, the city thought it was um, prudent to update that plan at this point in time. So it's sort of an interim update. It's not a full blown um, update, I would say, because we're not having a massive uh, public input process. What they decided to do this time around was um, have Y2 Analytics conduct another statistically valid survey, uh, which they did. They, they asked um, pretty much the same questions so we could compare apples to apples. Um, and that has provided us with a really good kind of pulse on where people are right now. And we'll be updating the plan based on those survey results. And then also um, some of the projects that the city has accomplished in the interim, such as um, you know upgrading the fitness center, which was kind of the big deal in the last master plan. So kind of setting aside the fitness center for you know now we can look at what are the community's other priorities. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. We're looking at those, those priorities and getting into updates um, you know, just documenting what the city has done since the last plan and figuring out where we need to go from here. And I can I can touch on a few um, kind of key results of the survey if that would be helpful for this group. Uh, I would be interested, Lisa, in understanding the two rounds of the survey and uh, what you learned in the comparison as well as some of the, the key results. Yeah, okay, let me run through that. I'll share my screen here. Okay, can everyone see that? Okay, great. So um, as I mentioned, Y2 Analytics conducted the survey. So I'm just gonna kind of do a high level. I'm not the survey expert. Um, they are definitely kind of the great consultants that the city has um, been using for the last few years. So the we had a survey, I think the original survey might've been completed in 2016 and um, this new survey was just conducted, um, finished up. I'm trying to remember what the time frame was on this one. It was either end of the year or early this year. Um, so it went out to, um, you know, over 11,000 emails were sent out and the survey had a, a response rate of 22%, which is really a, a pretty high response rate. Um, so that gives you just a, a margin of error of 2.3% on all of these, these responses and these questions. So the top five takeaways that they pulled out of the survey results are that the majority of residents say that the care tax should be used to upgrade existing parks um, in comparison to building new parks. And then this, this also, these survey results reflect some of the COVID influence. And so, um, Obviously the city saw a surge in park use that seemed to really jump up. And then they thought that might also be from um, some new arrivals and growth in the city. Um, walkability of parks is most important to respondents and people like having parks close to home. That's one of the most important criteria for parks, which parks people use. Um, and then people want to see a mix of formal and informal recreation facilities. You know, some people use the rec center, but other people just like to get outdoors and, and hit the trail. Um, and then you also have a really high percentage of the city using trails 
uh, frequently. So um, most respondents use trails, um, you know, 63% or um, for walking or jogging and then 30% using it for recreational biking. But, but most residents use it um, a few times a month or more often. So those are kind of the major key takeaways. This just shows you where the survey respondents were within the city. So they had a good distribution of respondents within the city. Um, overall quality of life in Orem is rated relatively high with an average of 81. Um, again, they wanna see upgrading um, existing parks and facilities as opposed to building new parks and facilities. This chart just breaks it down by age range. So you can see kind of the um, 35 to 44 year age range wants to see more new facilities built than the other age groups. Just an interesting note there. So what they did on their survey results here is um, in the blue, this, these are the current survey responses. And in the black here, this is the degree of change from the last survey. So this question was, how often do you use or visit Orem City Parks? And for those saying a few times a month or more, it was 47% um, response rate for that response this time around. And that's an increase of 9% since the last survey. So that just tells you that, you know, with COVID and everything, people are definitely getting out and using, using that more, using those parks more. Um, again, this just breaks it down by age range how often people visit parks, you can see kind of that 35 to 44 year old um, age range again is using parks more fre frequently than those other age groups. And I can actually send this um, out to you guys if you want to, you know, peruse these results yourselves. I don't want to, you know, get into the details too much in this. I just want to kind of give you an overview. Um, Lisa, I have a question. Um, those 30, the people that are using the parks more, do you think it's because they probably have children that age group? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, okay. One of the most likely characteristics of that age group. And you can see as well the 25 to 34 is kind of the next largest group. So so that whole group. And oops, did I okay, so looking at um, whether people agree with the statement, the city of Orman Orem provides an adequate amount of parks, recreation programs, or trails. So you can see people are generally satisfied. Um, they strongly agree or somewhat agree that the city provides an adequate amount of parks. Recreation programs are ranked slightly lower and you can see trails are kind of the least um, popular or least satisfied group of users. That's, that's, that's quite revealing given some of the discussions we've been having um, about prioritizing trails. So that's very helpful, thank you. Yeah, I think you'll see that throughout some of these other results as well. So looking at the most popular park field or recreation facility that people use most often, City Center Park, Bonneville Community, Sarah and Nielsen's Grove are the top five. And um, there's usually a long tail of kind of smaller parks. And then what is the, the most important reason that you use your most utilized park most often <laughs> closest to home. So you can see that's, that's really important for people. It's a convenience factor. And then you can see all of the other characteristics that um, drop down from there. And you can see that that bumped up three, you know, 3% 3 from the previous survey as well. And then um, if people don't use parks, the main reason they don't is because they're either not interested or they don't have time. Um, improvements to parks, uh, restrooms are the top requested improvement, and then measured walkways and jogging paths, and then main maintenance and cleanliness. So some of those basic facilities. Um, this word cloud is just looking at um, facilities outside of Orem and what you use most often. So you can obviously see that um, Provo and the Canyon and those sorts of facilities really pop up. Um, some detail on other facilities that the city should emulate. And you can see, um, you know, Spanish Fork, looking at Draper's Dog Park. There's a lot of detail if, if you want to even dig into the top line and, and appendix, um, the appendices of this survey. There's a lot of good information to glean and I can send all of that to you if you want. Looking at um, how the importance of having public parks within walking distance of your home, again, asking a question specifically related to that. And you can see that 72% of 
say that it's very or extremely important. So that, that's a pretty high uh, ranking. The rec center, um, uh, recreational improvements. So if Orem were to provide upgraded or expanded recreational opportunities and you had to choose just one, which of the following options would you prefer? You can see trails and trail amenities right there at the top, 36%. Um, sports court, those sorts of things kind of tail down from there. Um, looking at household recreational activities, this just, you can get into details on this, kind of the programming that, that people use within the city, both the, um, the fitness center and, and other program sports activities. Um, but you can see at the top, walking, bike riding, pretty popular. Um, looking at the fitness center and pass, pass ownership, um, you can see that that number has bumped up since the 2017 survey. It'll be interesting to see how that changes, you know, once it's been open for a little while. So looking at how often people use the fitness center and and I think that this survey was out before the, the new fitness center opened up. It's it's open now, correct? Okay. So it's been anyway. open since March. So it'd be interesting March. to see. Um, it's been very popular. Okay. And so a lot of these questions related to the fitness center, I think it would be interesting to see, to re-ask these questions a little bit of time, at, like maybe a year after the fitness center has been open. Um, and reasons that people don't use the fitness center, too busy or crowded, um, passes are too expensive. Again, not interested, no time. Again, alternative rec centers, you can, you can see Provo, Vasa, those types of things. Um, Planned future fitness center usage. Again, I'm not going to get into this too much. I want to focus on the other items for you. So how often do you or your members of your household use trails in Orem? Um, you can see 47%, and that's an increase of 17% from the last survey. That's a huge jump. And you can see all of these numbers have shifted to the left. <laughs> People, you know, 12% more said that they never used or visited trails in the previous survey. So you can see that's all kind of shifted to more frequent trail use. And then this question was about um, which trail or bike path you use most often. So Provo Canyon, Murdoch Canal Trail. I don't know that those are too much of a surprise. And also the breakdown of, of different types of activities on the trails, walking and jogging being the most popular, but still a significant number doing recreational biking. And then why people don't use trails. Um, this kind of a small group, um, only 394 out of that, whatever it was, 2,700 that responded said that they don't use trails. And so of those, 7% um, said that they lack information about trails. And that's always a big challenge. And <laughs> just whatever it is, your programs, your facilities, trying to get the word out and let people know what you have. That's always one of the biggest challenges. Can, can we pause on that for just a moment? Sure. Uh, would it be fair to say, Lisa, that it, in contrast to parks and some of your findings on parks, that the issue with trails uh, that we're uncovering here is not that they need to be upgraded, but it's that we need more of them and better information about them. Better information and I think connectivity and I think there might be some more questions specifically related to the trail improvements that people want to see. Um, the, 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 the fact that we only have 3% or so who, of people who do not use trails, right, saying it's because of accessibility trailheads or restrooms uh, makes me think that maybe it's, this is less of a, an upgrade issue and more of a actually just number of trails mm -hmm. issue. Yeah, I would think so. So when they asked um, what types of trails people want to see, um, asphalt trails, concrete, or natural surface, you can see that um, the asphalt trails here, 39%. And one, an interesting thing that I noticed looking through here is that all of these numbers have dropped. And the city has been you know, adding more trail connections since the last survey. And so I think 
and I'm, this is just a guess on my part, but I, my assumption is that part of that has to do with the fact that the city has been making improvements and just everybody's been using all of like parks and all your different facilities. So I think that people are generally feeling satisfied, but that doesn't mean they're, they don't want to see some improvements. Um, you can see, so asphalt trails and then also those natural surface hiking, biking and equestrian trails. Um, those are actually the most popular. Um, so if or were to increase the number of trails for recreation, where would you most like to see these new trails added? Um, extending the North Union Canal trail system is the, one of the most popular. 42% supporting that expansion. 39% wanted to see the, the Bonneville Shoreline Trail extended. And then 19% um, had some other requests. Um, expanding Lake Shore, Murdoch Canal Trails, connections to neighborhoods, which is always important. And then also bike paths. Do you happen to know, I'm sorry for the interruptions. Do you happen to know if that was a multiple choice or a free response question? I believe it was a multiple choice, I want to say. I'd have to look. We, I'll send you the survey results, and I think it shows you how the question was asked. I, I can't remember if they did it so that they could click on a certain color or just the legend. I'm not quite sure. I think it might have been a multiple choice. Um, so here's the, the question about specific improvements for the trails in Orem. So to your point, making trails more complete or connected, that was the most desired improvement. Um, linking trails um, you know, to neighborhoods, linking neighborhoods with the trail system, that was the next. And again, restrooms, more lighting, um, increased trail miles, and then it just kind of tails down from there. And then this question they ask about, um, they give people a hypothetical $100 and they can spend it on any sort of parks, recreation, trails, amenities that they want to and how people would divide up that money. So you can see again, walking and biking trails popping right to the top there, with, um, an average of $23 and 14 cents. Um, again, improvements to those existing parks and playgrounds next in line, then natural open space. And then you can see, uh, new neighborhood and community parks below that. Um, and this is interesting because this has actually a lot of consistency. Some communities we see a lot of differences in some of these questions. And so there'll be kind of competing or, or uh, confusing information, but it seems pretty straightforward in these results, what people are looking for. Um, they also asked people to suggest up to five recreational activities, programs, or facilities not currently offered by the city. You can see it was just kind of an open-ended, so they did a word cloud based on that, and then just pulled a few sample um, questions or a few sample responses from that, like more pickleball courts, dog parks, um, indoor facilities, more bike lanes and multi-use sidewalks, that sort of thing. So. And then they just have some demographic information at the end that you can get into if you want to um, kind of learn more about the people that um, took the survey. And they, they're really good about their quality control and weighting it, all of the data to make sure it reflects um, the demographics of the city. So it's a really good representation of community interests. Um, thank you very much, Lisa. Uh, I, I have one uh, big question, and, and I also just want to open it up to questions from the rest of the committee uh, as well. Uh, so what is the implication for you when you see this? What, what does this mean in terms of how you've shifted your planning as a result? Well, so part of the impetus for this update um, is more changes on the park side of things, you know, with the acquisition of the Hillcrest Park property um, and looking at, again, coming out of the survey, ways to upgrade existing parks and facilities. So instead of going and building new community or regional parks, the idea is that the city wants to invest in your existing facilities and something that may qualify as a neighborhood park based on acreage. The city may actually go in and amenitize it so much that it, it provides so much value play-wise and amenity-wise that it serves as a community park. And so we're looking at the plan from that standpoint, um, but also this, this trails component is huge. And um, it sounds like the city 
is in the process of um, starting to get the bicycle and pedestrian master plan updated and also the transportation master plan. And so those, all of these plans need to dovetail. And I'm not sure, Jake, I'm not sure, do you know more of the timing on those efforts? Um, all I know is that they've been talked about. Um, I think they're, um, they've been a little bit delayed. Our transportation uh -huh. engineer has just, uh, he's, a, he's moving to a new place. Um, and that will delay the, the process. Okay. Um, because ideally those would be updated because you have these separate documents. We would like them all to kind of coincide. Um, we generally defer, if you have a, a bike, bicycle and pedestrian master plan, we generally defer to that in this plan. Yeah, I understand it's, it's something that we've been talking about for a while. Uh, well, yeah. engineers have been talking about doing for a while. Um, and they've only been talking about it so far. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, Brian, are you on? Uh, questions for the committee? This is Debbie. I can tell you the request that I get. Now, it's not, not based on a survey, but um, probably because a lot of those younger families, I get a lot of requests for toddler zero to five toddler play equipment. I get a lot of requests for upgrading our leisure pool at the fitness center because it doesn't have a lot of fun kid, little kid things. And of course, pickleball is always really popular. You either love it or you say there's too many. So we always tell people stop me in line and say we need more pickleball courts. So those are the requests I personally get. Um, and our fitness center has been well received. Um, I know with Hillcrest, uh, we had a lot of pickleball courts. The neighbor thought there was too many, but I think we still want at least 10 to 12 and then walkable trails. And I'm sure, I'm sure we'll need to have a good um, toddler area and splash pad, you know, water feature, whatever we're going to call it. So Family, family centric things I think are going to be very popular. And um, I think people will come, obviously it's a neighborhood park, but when we spend as much as we're going to spend like on Hillcrest, nearly $10 million, we've got to make sure it's community. We don't normally spend that much on a, on a neighborhood park. That's got to be a community park. So yeah, that's just my sense. Yeah, it will be. Um, other comments or questions for Lisa? Well, I do have, I do have one. Um, I'm kind of new here. Hi, everybody. I'm Lauren. Um, how do you think, so trails, bike lanes, it's all mixed together in the, in the master plan. And so that's how the questions were phrased in the survey. Um, I do vaguely remember taking the survey. So um, it, it just, it doesn't seem to me that it was clear when you're taught, when it was talking about trails, at least at first, it wasn't clear that trails included bike lanes. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if you think that that may have skewed some of the results a little bit. Um, you know, maybe we had less people say they were commuting by trails because they thought it just meant you know, trails just meant like the Murdoch Trail, the the uh, the things that are actual trail trails walk only. Um, do you think that that might be an issue with the survey results? Yeah, I mean that's a definite possibility, and I think that that's something that should be teased out through the update of these other planning documents. Um, I'm sure they'll have a, a more extensive public involvement process. Um, and this one, uh, you know, as I said, this is kind of an interim update to this one, but this was a really helpful survey to kind of touch, you know, touch base with people where they are at now. But I can definitely see your point there with the confusion of those two. Yeah, I thought the same thing, Lauren, um, because it, had I received the question, I might have thought of, you know, more of what I think of as a trail, but I commute on a bike lane every day. And so I don't know if I would have thought about that. So, yeah. Um, Hillary, you had a couple of, of good comments in chat. I don't know if you're in a position where you want to verbalize those or not. If not, we can take the chat. 
Sure. I'm joining from a park. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm joining uh, from one of our beautiful Oran parks today. <laughs> I, my suggestion was just, is just more shade. Every time I take my kids to the park, I'm always like, more shade. And I would love to see the survey. That'd be awesome. Thanks. I think we'd all appreciate if you sent that that around, Lisa. That'd be great. And, and I will I will second Hillary's. We do get requests for sh more shade structures across um, some of our parks, whether it's our uh, splash pad or our altogether playground. People do want shade structures to shade the the hot the hot equipment, and so that that is definitely true. Lisa, this uh, this has been great, uh, a great presentation of data. We're delighted that you're uh, working on Hillcrest and uh, so many of these other important projects. Uh, one of the things that I'm taking away from this conversation uh, is that uh, we we have decided as a committee that we would like to spend some of our our time and capital to try to encourage people to be outside and to use active transportation and uh, to use our trail network. And uh, that's, that's aligned with, with uh, the mission of, of, of this committee. Um, the mayor um, asked us a couple of months ago to specifically look into trails. Uh, he was interested in some potential state funding for trails. Um, and so this is one step in that process is understand uh, the information you have had. Um, it sounds to me like there's a bit of a coordination challenge going forward that we need to also meet um, with folks that are doing uh, the master plan and see where we are on that. Uh, would you have any suge other suggestions for us in terms of how we can best uh, support the city in thinking about its next stages of trails? Hmm, that's a good question. I, I mean, I think that the, that master plan is going to be really key to figure out, you know, what you need and then figure out priorities. And, and obviously trails, a lot of a lot of trail implementation is just opportunistic, you know, what kind of unique opportunities present themselves. Um, so, you know, we, and we can definitely keep you in the loop on this, um, on this effort and have you uh, kind of review the update to this plan and make sure, you know, that we're kind of hitting everything that's important to your group. And we would love to get your eyes on the draft as, as that continues forward. We would absolutely love to, to be partners with you as you think about that draft and, and, and provide feedback uh, based on what we hear, right? And, and what we've been learning uh -huh. in the process. Um, we, we have a lot of common cause uh, there. Uh, so thank you for that. I have one more comment. Um, Lisa, another thing we've been talking about is landscaping that has, um, you know, drought tolerant plants and low maintenance. And um, I mean, everyone loves a lot of grass at a park, but we also need to design areas that we think will be a low water consumption. So I just wanted to throw that out as landscaping or whatever we want to call it, just to kind of keep that in mind for certain areas. Uh, we do live in a, we're having a drought and <laughs> we live in a desert. So that was an important principle that we wanted to talk about um, with you as well as businesses to kind of landscape with these kind of um, plants in mind. Yeah, that's great. And we, we like to look at um, the example of Park City sets because if you look at a lot of their parks, they leave a lot of, a lot of it natural, it's like sagebrush and you know all that good native and drought tolerant landscaping. And then they really focus you know, those maintained areas in those active spaces of parks and, and still have a balance of some of those passive uses. So. Um, just yesterday, uh, I, I did a tour up at University of Utah and uh, a couple other gardens and um, looking at some of their kind of water-wise landscaping, they utilize a lot of that. And it really does provide a lot of visual interest. And, um, you know, we've got plenty of of grassy areas and we definitely do need some grassy areas in our parks but um but i think that there's a lot of opportunities that we could have to provide some new visual um, interest and um, kind of model for residents what they could replicate at home 
with some of this um, water-wise landscaping that the city could provide. Great. Maybe one, one more thing just to bring to your attention, Lisa um, and Sarah, feel free to jump in on this one if, if you'd like. Uh, we, we've had an aspiration now for some time to have um, a, an educational natural landscape space um, and have thought about using an unused portion of a library balcony. There are some water concerns there. Um, but as we're thinking about uh, what to do with some of the new spaces that you're thinking about or some of the, some of the corners here and there where they might have high visibility or high traffic. Um, we have general consensus that we're looking for a good space to uh, be an educational space, uh, whether it be on um, plants that don't require a lot of water or a variety of other sustainable landscaping practices or uh, aspects of, of the su su sustainability cycle that we're trying to promote. Th those are things that we're looking for a good space for. And I don't know if you've had a, a chance to connect with anyone on that yet, with Sarah or others. But uh, if, if, you, if you see a space where you say, wow, this would be a really great space to provide an educational experience, we would love to have your eyes on that. Yeah, send, send me any ideas that you have. Um, or just respond to that email I'll send out with the survey and I'd love to hear any of your recommendations. And those are definitely great facilities to provide for community. Okay, any other comments before uh, we let Lisa go for today? I just had one more question that I thought of. Um, besides the survey results, do you have any of the hard data information from like MAG when they do their trail counters and stuff about like increased usage on the trails? I know they, they put up trail counters at um, around the 1600 North on the Murdoch Canal Trail. And uh, I'm sure they would be willing to do other places if, if they were asked to, but um, just to get some like idea of increased year over year usage yeah. besides just the survey. Yeah, I believe in the last plan we did look at the MAG data and we just haven't um, reached out yet for new, new data. So thanks for reminding me about that. My final question is Hillcrest Park. How close are you to showing us your latest? <laughs> well, Mark is looking at it right now and um, we'll have a few refinements happening and, and try to get a, a new rendering done. I think we're meeting with you guys on the 15th with staff. Okay, sounds so great. That's when we're hoping to have the new vision and go from there. That's exciting. It's really exciting. With that said, I'd love for you guys to all kind of weigh in and, and make sure you follow what they show us to see if we're got the right looking natural resource eyes on it. Because I'll, I'll be looking at it from a term of costs and family amenities, but I probably won't have my water wise eyes on. Uh, what's what's the right forum or, or way, to, way to do that, Debbie? Um, if it's at a, is it a work session? Is that when you're gonna present in two weeks? Uh, no, that's just going to be a meeting with staff initially, um, and then because we want to make sure we're doing any, you know, making sure we're meeting all of, you know, all of the needs that you guys are seeing, and just make sure we're not missing anything before we go to the council. And, and so, Quinn, what I would tell you to do is meet with Ben, Bren Bybee. Do you know who Bren is? Bren is kind of the spearheaded for the city, and have him as soon as he has something to show you weigh in on this. I'll try to message him and say, please show it to the Natural Resource Committee. Uh, but he's he'll be the person that will be spearheading the cities to show it to us after Lisa shows it to him. And the, so <laughs> he's the connection point is what I'm saying. Bren. Bren. Okay. Bren Bybee. Bren Bybee, yeah. Uh, Paul, um, you are our land use guy uh, on the committee. Would that be something you could, you, you could take the lead on and then involve us as as we can be involved? Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay, so if you would connect to Bren and, and, and just say, we would love to be able to share the latest and greatest with the Natural Resources Sustainability Committee for some input, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Lisa. 
Thanks, great. everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Lauren, uh, thank you for, for your positive interventions there. Um, and we're glad that you could join us today. Would you introduce yourself and uh, your role and, uh, and uh, what you'd like to share with us today? And I'm sure we'll have questions for you. All right, um, my name is Lauren Chandler. And uh, I, I'm, I guess, representing the Orem Bicycle Coalition. This is not any kind of official group. Um, we just saw that Orem City did not have its own, its own, you know, pedestrian bicycle specific uh, committee or group. And so we formed this one on our own and it's open for anybody to come to our meetings and participate and try to advocate for cycling in, in the city. And that's all kinds of cycling. Um, anyway, I'm not the leader of the group. I'm just available, I guess, a lot. So here I am. Um, I don't have any particular qualifications or, or connections with the city. So that's kind of what I'm here to, to talk to you guys about. And what, what's to the purpose of the coalition? So when you, you get together, what, um, what is your evil plan? just to advocate for cycling, but um, we have, um, what is it, Sarah? Is it the three points, the three E's that- um, Was it only three or was it five? Three or five. I don't know. It was like engineering, education. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to go look it up now. But I know. <laughs> <laughs> we basically go over the, the, the three or five E's that um, the League of American uh, Bicyclists um, have that they use to measure communities by um, to whether they're bicycle friendly or not. Um, and so a few years ago when we first got started, um, that was one of the things that we were concentrating on was completing the, the application to the League of American Bicyclists to get bike friendly community status, which we got bronze. Um, but we just kind of continue that you know, those, those different areas, you know, through each meeting. Um, right now we're concentrating a lot on education, um, trying to do bike rodeos. We have a, later this month, we have a bicycle um, smart cycling class for adults. Um, it's available um, and maybe try to get some more bike rodeos and, and bicycle courses into um, some of the local elementary schools. Um, and then we talk about the engineering aspects of, you know, bike lanes, obviously is a big, big one, bike lanes, bike trails, and complete streets. Um, that's one of the biggest problems we have. Uh, we think with Orem is we have a lot of good pieces, but we don't really have anything that's complete. Um, we don't have, we, you know, the most complete bike lane I can think of is fourth east. Everything else is just in pieces. <laughs> um, so we talk about a lot. Of, um, also, we've done some, what is that called, Sarah, where you just go and make up a, like they did that oh, roundabout over um, by. The, yeah, over by the fitness center. It's, mm -hmm. um. Tactical urbanism. Tactical urbanism. But it was sanctioned by the city. Right. So it was it was in combination with the city and a couple of other groups helped, like the Provo group um, helped with that, I think. I wasn't there myself. I, I couldn't be there. But um, anyway, they made a roundabout over in that three-way intersection over by the fitness center. And the city kind of kept it now. They put some of that those permanent stakes there and, and they made a roundabout there where we had, you know, done this tactical urbanism project. So those are just some of the, some of the little things that you like to do. And I will add that the, um, this Warren Bicycle Coalition also has representation from MAG and from the County Health Department. This is Councilman Luray. Did your um, organization weigh in on the new bike skills up at Tim, Tim Park up the canyon? Yes, um, we were involved with that also with OICA because we had originally we had some of the uh, the Warm Youth Cycling Association coaches were 
were part of our group, although they haven't been in quite a while, but, but they were big proponents of that. And we were involved with that. And uh, the opening ceremony for the initial portion was done at the same time as an event we organized, which was cycle fest um, back in 2018. Anyway. Um, so that the part of the, the, the ribbon cutting was done at our events there. Um, I think and we, we just opened it. another part of it though. I think we just opened a new, we, we've upgraded. Right, the new part we didn't really have anything to do with because I, I don't know, COVID or, or whatever kept us kind of out of the picture. <laughs> okay. But, but with the initial portion of it, we did. Thank you. Uh, Lauren, uh, thank you for that. Thank you for being with us. We're delighted that you guys are in operation. Um, and we have some act, uh, active bikers uh, on our committee as well, who I think are reasonably familiar with the challenges of, of, and pleasures of biking in Orem. Um, two things that might be of interest to you or we, we could collaborate a little bit. Uh, one is that we have previously talked as part of our committee uh, about um, hosting and, and maybe co-sponsoring with you uh, and your organization. Um, some events where we, they're just bike orm events, right? Where, where we show people where the bike lanes are. And uh, we, we do, you know, we, we, we bike Northern Orem, we bike Southern Orem or something like that. But we have uh, a Saturday morning event where anybody with different abilities and interests and in learning more about biking orm is led through Orem Streets, right, by a member of, uh, of your group. And uh, these are things we would love to advertise and, and would be part of our educational mission as well. So that might be something that, that you could chat about and see if that's there's an opportunity to co-host there. Um, a, a second thing is that it would be really helpful for me, and I think as part of our broader trails discussion as well, um, to understand uh, where the pain points are. So um, when, and, and I've had some of these experiences, but I just don't have a comprehensive view of it. Um, where you're biking along, right? And you say, wow, this was a real pain to get through, through this particular intersection or wherever you are. And this makes me not want to bike this road anymore, right? The, the, those are, uh, those particular points in the city, I think we would love to have a list of. Um, as well as uh, perhaps some of your priorities for connecting pieces. We, we saw in the survey data that connectivity is really important. And places where you just, you're biking and you say, wow, I don't know why there isn't some connectivity here. Um, this would vastly improve the experience at relatively little uh, cost or intervention. So, so opportunities and pain points, I think are, are things that I, we would love to have a, a more comprehensive view of. Okay. Um, so would you like us to like maybe in our next meeting to make a list of those kind of things and maybe prioritize them how we how we see them and just kind of pass that along? Or? Yes, please. Uh, we, we, we have learned from our discussions with the municipality on a number of occasions that often um, and Lisa mentioned this as well, uh, often the reality is, is that when a road is being redone, you know, there's an opportunity there to do something at low cost and that it, it can be quite pricey just to, to go do something when other things are not in the works. But if with, without having a list of priorities and an understanding from um, the biking community's perspective as to what our priorities should be, then we're not likely to get this right. Yeah, I can say that pretty much every one of our, our main roads has been redone since the 2010 master plan. So <laughs> a lot of those opportunities have been missed, I think, um, for whatever reason. I don't know what the reason is why you would, you know, have a bike lane stop all of a sudden when you're, you know, redoing a road, but, you know. Well, um, information from you would help us a lot, I think. Okay. 
Other comments and questions for Lauren? Um, I'm going to make one more. We just did all the neighborhood plans in all of Orem, and some of those neighborhood plans did have finishing bike trails and things like that. So if you have a list from us, as well as the neighborhood plan, that is a double reason that to put that a priority. And we 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 have a list of priorities and capital projects, and we fund them as we go. So if we could dovetail a neighborhood's desire as well as the bike bicycling community, I think you'll have a really good um, credibility in helping us move that higher up on a priority list. And, and I think that um, in my view, the, this, the bicycling community is a lot bigger than we think it is because there's a lot of people that don't ride their bikes just because they think it's hard to get places, you know, unsafe, whatever. So the bicycling community could be a lot broader than just the people like me that get it dressed up in spandex and <laughs> go out and ride funny looking bike bikes with curly handlebars. So Jake, um, do you have the master plans and have you pulled out the ones that want to finish bicycle trails? Do you know which ones are? And if not, can you find out? I can pull up the master plan right now and share my screen um, if you give me a second. Um, let me see here. Uh, I am aware that they completed a lot of the trails that were on the master plan, not trails, sorry, bike lanes that were on the master plan. Um, let me see here. Is, but I'm talking about the neighborhood plans, the individual neighborhood plans, not the, not the necessary master plan. Okay. Um, I think Matt would be able to speak more to that. Um, but it, yeah, I'm aware that. Uh, and, and it may take another minute. I'm just saying, I think it makes sense if there's a pain point and the neighborhood plan also has it as a pain point. I think that gives you so much credibility. It does with me. I'm going to say, hey, let's do it. Fix it. Go. I think we need that. Uh, and I think we need to update our uh, bicycle master plan. Um, it's, it's the engineering department, though. Um, and like I said, they've had some things that have uh, delayed it uh, internally in the department. Uh, with that. Um, I think um, I, I, when the time comes that we do start the neighborhood plan, we definitely need the bicycle coalition to help with that plan. We absolutely need their input. Um, I don't know, Matt, do you want to add anything to that? No, I think that's appropriate. I mean, I think we'd love to have their input. And um, I think the biggest challenge is we have master planning documents responsible in different departments. Um, and, uh, you know, pub, uh, the parks plan is being handled by the city manager's office. The bike plan is being handled by the engineering office and neighborhood plans are being held by our office. So let me uh, take note of that and um, let me circle back with Jason and our crew and we'll discuss how do we better coordinate and integrate, you know, these plans and, and make sure they're speaking to each other. Great. That, that would be really helpful. And, and Matt um, or, or Jake, I don't know which of you is the right person to make this request, but I think it would be helpful, even if it's a few, few months out, um, for us to get someone from the engineering department who's point on the bike bike plan to visit with us. That might help focus us as well as focus them on that uh, on that plan. I know Sam has spoken to this group before um, about the bicycle master plan. Um, I yeah, we had we had Sam Kelly and uh, Brady. Yeah, Brady Hale. Brady Hale. Yeah, um, Brady Hale just got hired with UDOT uh, and today was his last day, um, but Sam's still around. Um, and he, so it would have been Brady that would have been heading up the bicycle master plan um, and Sam would have been overseeing it. Um, so we would need to reach out to Sam again um, and uh, see what he's done with that. Yeah, I, I, even though we've heard from him. What's the specific request to have them? Um, I, I think the request from my perspective is 
that we would like to know, we, we would like to have an update um, as to where are you guys on it, right? Um, it's very hard for us to do anything without full information as to having a map of what's been done and what hasn't been done. So at a minimum, the update should be stuff that has been done, right? That, as I recall, was not on the map last time. I, th I actually think it was, if my memory is correct. I could be wrong, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he shared an updated map um, compared to the 2010 one that you can find online. So I, I, I do think he has that, and he did share it. Um, but if I remember right, it, we didn't get a really good idea of what was next. Like, what are they going to, where is the next bike lane going to be? Um, what's already in the works compared to that 2010 plan. And then it sounds like we're wanting to update, right? So that 2010 plan might be out of date anyway. It is out of date. And, and part of that 2010 plan, and I've talked to Lauren a little bit about this by email. Part of that 2010 plan is that Orem wanted to be a gold, uh, gold medal what is an American Bicycle Association city by yeah, that's silver silver or gold status with the with the bicycle league? Yeah, by twenty twenty or something like that. We're we're at bronze, so we're making progress. But um, I think that that would be definitely something I'd like to talk to Sam about and whoever else is a stakeholder in that. And how do we get from bronze to silver? And if we want to continue on to gold, how do we do that? All right, well, I have notes down on that and I will start coordinating that with Sam. We'll see what we can do. Thanks, Matt. Those are great suggestions. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Lauren, uh, we have a few things we need to wrap up on before our meeting comes to a close, but we just wanna say thank you for being here. And it seems like we have common cause in a number of areas and, and we uh, need to get together again. Okay. Um, I do have another meeting that I have to go to. Is there, uh, what's, what's the rest of your agenda like? Uh, we're just doing updates so we can let you go. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, and, and do you know if, if, uh, what's, do you know yet what, like what your next month's agenda will be, or if that would be useful for, for me to, uh, what, what, as well, what do or? you think, what do you think your timeline would be on providing us with some information on those, those items we gave you? on the hot points. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'll be at our next, uh, the coalition's next meeting or not because I'm going out of town. Um, so I'll have to run that by um, our fearless leader, Evan. Um, I, I think we can accommodate your timeline. Okay. Um, but uh, when you're at a point where you feel like you have some things you'd like to share with the city. Uh, maybe maybe we could start here. What? Hispanic couple, they come out of your and then uh, and then uh, coordinate through our our, our planners. Um, uh, Matt is our long-term planner, for example, um, on figuring out ways of trying to get this information into the system. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the invite. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Lauren. All right. In our last uh, few minutes, uh, I thought we'd just do any any quick updates uh, on various parts of our stewardship that you'd like to share. Uh, the only thing I'll share, take 10 seconds, is that I, I did reach out uh, to uh, R.C. Willie and Uncle Sam's um, to try to set up meetings uh, to, to make a recommendation on uh, Green Business Awards. Um, and we're in the process of, I've been out of town, but we're in the process of me getting actually over there to, to see what they're doing. And I, I think I can save, save that recommendation for next month, if that's all right. Um, Sarah. Um, okay. I, I'm unmuted now. Sorry, I've got a chip bag being closed over here. Um, first of all, I've been delighted to hear the birds in the background, Quinn. Uh, Sounds lovely, very therapeutic. Um, so I have not been doing 
my assignments very well lately and it's caused me some great frustration and I apologize for that. Um, I've been starting school, my graduate program starts full time in the fall, but I have a prerequisite and I have been taking an Arabic language class for the past two and a half months as well. And so going back to school has been quite an adjustment for me and my schedule and uh, some things have kind of fallen by the wayside. So I don't know what that means for my position on this committee going forward. I would love to stay here, but I also uh, don't want to drag the committee down um, because I haven't been fulfilling my obligations to the degree that I would like. So I don't know. Just intervene for just a moment there. Okay. Um, it's really, really hard for me to imagine you dragging the committee down. Uh, <laughs> the only thing you've ever done is pull us up. So I just want to make sure we, we're realistic here about uh, the contributions you've been making. And if you need to step back a bit and, and not have so much on your plate, right, let's distribute it around the committee a little bit more because you've carried a really wonderfully heavy and successful burden for many years, Sarah. So uh, we, anyway. we, we want to circle around and be helpful there. Okay, thank you. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how things go. Um, I would obviously like to continue to stay here. Um, but as far as another project that I would like to continue, Matt, um, I know that at one point we had talked about maybe getting together to talk about the library. I don't know if, if uh, that is still something that we could do, but I, I would like to continue to um, explore that option. Um, I know we started to build a, a shared document as far as you know, to build that up and, and see how that might look moving forward in meeting with the library. Um, so those are the, the couple things on my plate, but I am preparing another post for the water feature. Um, and I, I'm hoping to get a post up uh, encouraging people to ride their bikes to Summerfest. So those are the two things on my list in the immediate future. That's excellent. And then uh, maybe maybe you and Matt can coordinate offline on yeah. setting up that meeting. Uh, Hillary said in chat that uh, she's starting the Water Conservation Survey this weekend, which is awesome. Um, and that she's also at a softball game and that we shouldn't bother her. Um, Paul? Uh, so one of the main things that I was up to this uh, month was just communicating with Warren um, and he kind of gave you a lot of the information that I was able to get about the Orem Bike Coalition as well. Um, one thing that I don't think was mentioned, but we've talked a lot about, in, uh, including with, with Hillary, is that they already have access through MAG, I guess, to, to a lot of user data. That's something that we were potentially interested in, in, in how many people are using different trails or bike lanes, et cetera. So that's something we could probably tap into rather than reinvent the wheel. Um, and another thing that it was just connected to what we were talking about before with land use and maybe park design, um, I visited a park up in Salt Lake that I was incredibly impressed with. Have you, any of you been to the Conservation Garden Park in, I don't know if it's South Salt Lake or Riverton? I have um, once years ago, but I, I'd love to get back there. Uh, it's in West Jordan. Um, but it's got some really awesome... Uh, just walking area, informational stuff, and then it's all water-wise uh, sort of stuff. And it, it's quite inspirational in terms of maybe if we could do something even on a smaller scale in one of our parks, if we're looking to do that sort of thing, it's really quite impressive. So that's something um, I think we could also talk about in the future. Is, is that a field trip we should take with some uh, stakeholders? I think that would be lovely. It would be a wonderful. Okay, um, you're on it, Paul. I'm gonna that for us. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be out of town for a while, but uh, yeah, this is something we should definitely do. 
I, I understand you're on your way to the to Oregon. Yes, yes, okay. very excited. That's right as the heat wave comes, we're heading for the coast. <laughs> well, I, I spent the last week hiking the Oregon Coast Trail. I'm in a cabin. Oh, nice. And uh, it was very physically demanding and gorgeous. Yeah, wonderful. So I'm so excited for you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jake, Matt, Debbie, anything you want to circle back on or we close? Um, I do. I, I'm getting a lot of questions on the drought and with the governor's, um, you know, declaration. And of course we know. So I think we need to be really cognizant of that. We need to present, pr to provide education on water conservation. And then of course we'll be looking with our water engineers about, you know, when you can water and, you know, and, and, and scaling back. But just so you know, lots of questions on drought. What's Orem going to do? What's Orem? And I think if we're proactive here, it would be a good idea if we can put tips or you know whatever you guys do and then we'll just work with you know how often do you need to water your thing and and, and how long i mean all these things that we probably talk about but i think this year it's going to be more important than ever good push and uh hillary you have some expertise in that if you want to make any suggestions you can darren i think is our official water person on the committee and I can reach out to him and ask him to pull something together in terms of messaging. And I think he'd be willing to do that. And Hillary said he's happy uh, to help. So uh, Debbie, you're thinking about through our regular social media channels? Yeah, I think I would work with Pete. And uh, once we get through Summerfest, there'll be lots of things we can message after Summerfest. So that's yeah. over on the 12th. And I, I think you should run something once, twice, three times a week because you know, different people will see it at different times and it's gonna be very important this summer that we conserve water. Do do pay attention as you're roaming around Orem. If you see yards that um, would be great to feature, let me know. I have no problem going up to strangers and saying, hey, can I take a picture of your yard? <laughs> um, so and yeah. You know, and beautification can bring that, that sign over <laughs> and give them yard of the month or whatever it is. Okay, um, awesome. Debbie, uh, we really appreciate the contributions you're making and the very, very timely ways of connecting us with what's going on in the, the broader city and broader, broader uh, council. Um, uh, I was going to say one last thing. If you do a survey, we were talking about adding the water conservation, and then we we're talking about the Rock, Rocky Mountain Power. Remember we talked about that a month ago? I think we got to make sure that if a survey goes out that the questions we want to ask are part of that. So just be cognizant of being part of a future survey. Yeah, and who do we need to talk about in terms of timing on that? Um, once again, it's either Bren or Stephen Downs at the city administration. And um, I think they recently did one. Did we ask the questions we wanted to know about as far as the- No, no, I had reached out to ask about that whole process and- um, for a future one. Okay, well we how, just need to how just stay on that so that um, I meet periodically like quarterly with the city manager, but I'll, I'll bring it up. But if you guys do it, eventually you'll get on one of our future surveys. Okay, and Paul, you're reaching out to Bryn anyway, right? You agreed to do that. Would you, as part of that com conversation, figure out the timing of his next survey? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Besides minutes, Jake or Matt, do you have anything? I have something, uh, if, uh, but if Matt, if you have anything, if you could go first. No, don't have anything. Cool. Um, so uh, really quickly, next month is July. Um, our calendar shows that our next meeting will be July 8th, which is the second Thursday of the month. Typically we meet on the first Thursday. Um, so a uh, couple of things with that. So we could choose to meet on the first instead, if you would like to, um, or um, we could meet on the eighth. Um, I uh, just uh, put in, uh, so uh, this, okay. If we meet on the first, uh, I will definitely be there. If we meet on the eighth, I will definitely not be there. 
Um, happy to do whatever you want. Um, Let's ask um, who, who um, by show of hands or check mark, would be willing to meet on the first. It's available to do that. I will most likely be out of town, but I can probably join by, I think I can join by Zoom. Okay. Okay, we don't have Darren's vote. Um, Sarah would be out of town, but maybe joining by Zoom. And then on the 8th, how many would be available on the 8th? I could Zoom, I'm in Houston. Okay. Um, and so it's, it sounds like like uh, either one could, could work. Um, Sarah, if you're willing to Zoom in, maybe the first, given, given Jake's hosting abilities there. And then can we just ask, uh, how many of you would be interested in trying to meet in person? Yeah, should we try try for the, the, the first in person and, and make a Zoom link available as well? Um, and so Sarah, if you're out of town, we'll put you on the big screen. Um, all right. Uh, because we definitely want you there. Okay. Uh, Sounds good. Uh, that, I, I will, I'll let Darren know that. And then uh, Jake, if you would, wouldn't mind making sure that uh, we, are reminded about getting an agenda made up the previous week. That'd be helpful. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, we, we saw the minutes. Um, I, I have one potential uh, modification on the minutes. Um, I know that our minutes are largely listening to um, Hi. largely Hello. listening to the recording. Uh, oh, you're all for two days. Uh, on number one on the minutes, uh, it's, it's, it is Park Department presentation on trails, which I believe was the agenda item. Uh, we did not have a Park Department presentation on trails. Do we need, do we need to change that, Jake? Um, below that, I wrote um, that that item was uh, moved to this meeting today. Uh, or do you think I should have another note there that uh, clearly shows that it was to our meeting today. Um, I think more clarity would be helpful. Okay, I can provide more clarity. Thank you. Are there any other comments or, or, or questions about the minutes that were sent around? Okay, with, with Jake's uh, additional note, um, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I can move to approve. I'll second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? All right. Um, and uh, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll motion to adjourn. And I'll second. Thank you. Uh, meeting is adjourned until July, unless we can come up with a field trip uh, in between. But uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for a great meeting. Thanks uh, to our guests as well. Um, uh, I thought they provide some really helpful information. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Hope you. to see you at Summerfest. All right. Yeah. Bye. Take care.